Hey, welcome to today's lesson. <clears throat> today's lesson, we're going to solve some systems of equations. And you'll notice one of the themes of this course is we take things that you've learned already and we dive really deep into them and we try to understand why they work, why they're important. And then we take that knowledge and we extrapolate it out to a little bit more complicated problems. So in Algebra 1, you solve linear systems of equations. That's where you graph two lines and you see where they intersect. And wherever they intersect, that's the solution. That's the one point, the one value for x and for y that makes both equations true. And you learn some algebraic ways of handling that. Well, our little sophisticated approach will be now we'll look at nonlinear systems, maybe a line in a circle or a circle in a parabola. And we want to find algebraic ways of solving these systems so we don't have to go through the hassle of graphing them and then look at this, trying to figure out where on earth they meet. So let's see how your algebra skills are by jumping right in. Here you have a system of equations. You can tell it's linear because the exponents are 1. And why don't you pause the video, solve this however you want. Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you've solved this and got the correct answer. I'm going to solve it in front of you so you can kind of see maybe a different way of, of, of how you solve it. Although I really don't care what system you use to solve as long as you can get the answer. Looking at this, I'm going to say probably the easiest method is elimination. I want to combine these two equations together and either get the x's to cancel or the y's. I'm randomly just going to choose the y's. So how do I get the y's to disappear? Well, maybe I'll multiply this top equation by negative 3. And this bottom equation to get the y's to disappear, I'll multiply by 2. And if I do that, the top equation and the bottom equation both transform to look like this. Now these are the exact same equations as those. They're the exact same. If I graphed them, they would be the exact same. But look what happens when I add these equations together. When I do that, the y's cancel. And when I add the equations together, I get x equals negative 3. And now that I have the x value, I can take that x value and I can plug it into either of these two equations for x. And since I want to avoid fractions, maybe I'll plug it into the top equation. So the top equation becomes 3x, remember x is negative 3, 3x plus 2y equals negative 8, yada, 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 y equals a half. So my answer is negative 3 comma 1 half. What does that mean? Well, that means that if x is negative 3 and y is a half, that is the only value of x and y that makes both equations true. That means that if I graphed this, here's one equation, here's the other. These are the actual graphs of these two lines. The only point that lies on both lines is at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, comma, a half. Right there, that point is the only one that works. Let's try another one. Here's another one. You can tell that even though it looks kind of ugly, they are linear equations. Why don't you give this a go? Try to solve it on your own. Pause the video. Come back when you're done. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I hope you did pretty well. Uh, I decided to manipulate these equations by multiplying just the bottom by 2. I noticed that if I did that, not only would I wipe out this 2 in the fraction, but I would get 5x. That's a good sign. And that transforms. The top will stay the same, and the bottom becomes that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's that mean? Now, wait a minute. You, you notice that we could, we could multiply one of these equations by negative 1 and add them together, but we're going to get 0 equals 0. Do you realize that these are the exact same line? I mean, there's really no reason for confusion. This means that any value of x and its corresponding y value is a solution for both equations because both equations are the exact same thing. Now, our fancy way of saying this is, notice we, you know, we got a really fancy pencil here and a tie. There are infinite solutions that satisfy that equation. So when this happens, when your variables cancel out and you're left with a true statement, 
it means that there are infinite solutions as long as they satisfy one of the two equations. Okay, so that's the review from algebra. Let's move on and let's take a look at something new, like number three. So in number three, you take a look at this first equation and the second equation, and first thing you notice is they're not linear. So let's come over here to this pencil and let's figure out what, what this pencil person is asking. If you were to graph this system, what would it look like? Well, we know it's not lines. So what is this first equation going to give us? It gives us, it gives us a parabola. What's the second equation give us? Well, it also gives us a parabola, except this one I think you'll notice is facing down when you, when you get it in, in the right form. Is it possible to get zero solutions? Well, sure. If these two parabolas don't meet ever, you would get no solutions. There's no point that works for both of them. Could you get one solution? Absolutely, if these parabolas shared a vertex, or even if these parabolas were tangent to each other at one point, you could get one solution. How about two solutions? Yeah, overlapping parabolas. There are two solutions. Could you get three? Not in this case. Now, if one of these was a, you know, one of those uh, sleeping parabolas, I think uh, Mr. Mr. Callaway calls them, you could get three solutions, maybe if it you know, crossed two sides and was tangent to one. And if one of them was a sleeping parabola, you could get four. But in this case, since it's not a sleeping parabola, I think we're either going to get zero, one, or two solutions. Let's let the algebra tell us what to do. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can solve this and then come back and check in and see, see how you did. Hey, welcome back. Now, let's have a conversation. I know some of you aren't pausing the video and you're just letting me do all the work. Don't do that. You've got to do the work for yourself. Do the work. Make sure you get the right answer. Then feel good about yourself if you do. If you try the work and you can't solve it, you're more invested in this problem and you're more likely to learn what you need to do to do it right. So pause the video and do the work. All right, all right, enough of that. Let's see what, what we've got here. So uh, in this case, I decided to do some substitution. And let me, let me back up for a second. I already know that y is the same as x squared. And so my thought was, every time I see an x squared, like right here, I can put this y in its place. And so you see that I have y plus y equals 8. This is a great opportunity to use the basic math concept of substitution. If two things are equal, one of them can replace the other. Now, I just as easily could have replaced this y with an x squared, but I didn't feel like dealing with quadratics. So y plus y equals 8, 2y equals 8, y equals 4. Easy enough. So what do we do once we know y is equal to 4? Same thing we've been doing. We pick one of these two equations and we put a 4 in for y. So I'm going to pick the top equation. And when I do that, I get 4, because y is now 4, equals x squared. How do you solve this? Well, you take the square root of both sides. x equals the square root of 4. Actually, I don't think that's entirely true. Did you catch my mistake? I hope you caught my mistake. Remember, any time you put a square root into a problem where it wasn't already there, you have to include the plus minus. Turns out x is actually positive 2 or it's negative 2. And that gives us two answers. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is negative 2, y is 4. Those are my two answers. And my goodness, this one, I better find my highlighter. This one right here, boy, do kids mess that up all the time. Don't do that. Be careful. All right. Here's another problem. And again, if you look at it, you'll notice this is a line. And you'll notice this is a parabola. And I, I think in this case, substitution might be easiest here. Why don't you see what you can do? Pause the video. Try to solve it. Come back. Well, I hope you listen and I hope you tried it on your own. Here's what I'm thinking. 
if I'm going to do substitution, um, gosh, I, I, I think what I might do is I might try to keep my x's up here and get rid of this y. So I'll keep the top equation the same, but I'll make this y equals x minus 2. Now I can make a substitution. Of course, I know, let me grab my pen here, um, I know that if y is the same as x minus 2, I can replace that y with an x minus 2. So that's what I'm going to do right here. 3x squared plus y, x minus 2, equals 2x. And, oh, oh, sweet mother, we've got a quadratic. Good news. That means we need to take everything over to one side, and if we can, we try to factor it. If it doesn't factor, you've got a great little formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, that you can use to solve it. But I think we ought to try to factor first. So let's see, factoring. Well, obviously, we're going to start out with uh, 3x and x. Negative 2, negative, I think if you play with this, you'll see that works. Right? Negative, yep, that's it. So that means that x is either negative 2 thirds, or it's 1. So if we know x is negative 2 thirds, I can take that value right there and I can plug it in for x and get the corresponding y. And if x is 1, I can take that and plug it in there and get the corresponding, or corresponding value for y. And that gives us these two answers. Negative 2 thirds gives us that y value. 1 gives us that y value. All right. Last problem, and then you get to try some on your own. So but look at this guy right here. He says, hmm, try it on your own first. So give it a go. Pause the video. Give it, give it a try. Well, I hope you paused it and you tried it. First of all, you know this top one is a line. It's linear. The second one, you have to think all the way back to your geometry days. This is a circle. We have a line and a circle. I'm going to try to solve this through substitution. So I'm going to pick this top equation and I'm going to manipulate it where I get x by itself. So x is negative y minus 3. I'm going to take that value for x and in the second equation I'm going to replace that x with a negative y minus 3. So that gives me over here negative y minus 3, the whole thing squared, plus y squared equals 17. Why don't you expand this out real quick for me? I'll wait. Doo, 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 doo. All right, uh, we have some beef. Here's my question. Did you just fail your Algebra 1 teacher? Let's talk about expanding this because one of the biggest mistakes smart kids make is they rush through expanding this. If I asked you to expand x plus 3 squared, a lot of kids would claim that that's x squared minus or plus 9. It is not. And yes, I am going to call you a name, and that name is a bonehead. You know x plus 3 squared is x plus 3 times x plus 3. It's x squared plus 6x plus 9. Don't be a bonehead. Do the right expansion. So negative y minus 3 squared is y squared plus 6y plus 9 plus y squared equals 17. Getting everything over to one side, we've got to factor this. And just a side note, do you notice that I could divide both sides by 2, make this a much nicer uh, number to deal with? So factoring that, obviously we're going to have a y and a y. Let's see, negative 4, 3, I think that's right. You need to be good at factoring. If not, let me know and I'll get you the practice you need. Finally, we can solve this and we get y equals negative 4 or 1. And once we know the values for y, I can take this negative 4, I can plug it in up here, get the corresponding x value. Once I, I know y is 1, I can plug it all the way in here, get its corresponding x value. I think you'll find these are your answers. Well, that is your lesson. Notice we took something you were already good with from Algebra 1, we expanded it, and now you're, you're, you're dealing with much more complicated shapes. When I see you again, we are going to talk about some of the processes that we did, in particular, why you're allowed to add two equations together.
Take care, everybody.